Hi, this is Catherine. This is Taking Tea with Catherine. This is a new to me tea. The mug's not new, but you'll see why I use it in a moment. This is um, Harney and Sons, which is one of my favorite tea companies. Um, Shakespeare's Globe, a Midsummer Night's Tea. Floral black tea. That almost sounds familiar, like I've had something like that before, but I've definitely not had this particular tin. And it's another one I don't think I... I think it was sold out online when I was looking for it. So when I saw it in the shop, I was like, okay, mine now. It has black tea and oolong tea. And it also has some flavorings, which I'm not sure what that means. But it also has um, oil of bergamot and rose petals and ginger root, orange peel. So it's it's kind of a nice balance for me. It's the kind of floral black tea that I like. I don't like too many of them. Some of them are too perfumey. This is a good balance for me. Anyway. And I thought I'd use the TARDIS mug because the only way I could get to Shakespeare's Globe right now would be time and space travel. <laughs> and I thought, okay, I'm going to do a teen ramblings about a little bit about last year and a little bit about next year. I've already done some videos about my future reading goals, you know, the books that I plan to hope to read, etc. And thoughts about reading in general. So this is just a, a last last thought about that sort of thing for now um and uh first i'm gonna look back at 2020 a little bit i don't want to look back too much uh so one of my big goals was to read um classics but i was already reading classics but i mean just as many as possible without going crazy and i think i did good i counted 15 books that i that i consider classics and it's a little bit of a my own personal criteria because for instance I counted Murder on the Orient Express by Agatha Christie as a classic. But another one of her books, Mystery of the Blue Train, I think it's called, I didn't, because to me it's not a classic. It just happened to be written a while ago by an author that is, to me, amazing. But it didn't count to me, so I didn't count that. I read Anne of Green Gables, which I consider a children's classic, but to me it's just a classic in my life. <clears throat> but I didn't count Anne of Avonlea or Anne of the Island, which came after that. And some people might have counted that as classics, and that's fine. But to me, I just didn't. Most of the books I read were were considered universally classics, though. But, you know, make allowances for certain things. So I thought I did pretty well. Even if, even if I didn't count some of those books, I still would have probably um, averaged out one, one a month, which is what I was going for anyway. I don't mind doing more than that, but... And then I counted 28 nonfiction. As of now, I counted 77 books that I've completed this year, which is fine. Um... So that's not, it's approximately a third. It's not exactly half and half what I wanted, closer to 60-40, which was my, you know, more realistic goal. So I'm fine with that. I would have liked it better if I would have um, read a little more history, though, in the nonfiction genre. Because I did read some biography, I read some history, and natural, you know, nature writing, whatever you want to call it, etc. But definitely not enough proper... Um, history books and I have so many that I want to read so I'm hoping I could do a little better next year um but now I've noticed a lot of people um yes Freddie um I noticed a lot of people are doing like their favorite books of the year and I probably could come up with something like that I've, I've seen some tags my cat's running around that's good he needs the exercise um it, it it's um yeah there's some there's some tags that I might participate in that, that have to do with your favorite books of the year and different things but I'm not ready yet, I think, at least not right now, just because I can't really gauge what are my favorites this year. I know certain books that I really enjoyed, but, um, it, like, for instance, anything I read in January and most of February were good to me because I was in a happy place. Like, um, you know, around the end of January, I got a new cat and it was just, that was just fun. Uh, I was looking forward to my, I know I keep bringing it up. I was looking forward to my trip to London and you know, as of January and February, that was going to happen. So it was, even when I was having a bad day, I had that in my head. So even my reading was corresponding with that. And, you know, and then, but everything changed as, I, I don't know if you guys know this, but we had a worldwide pandemic. I don't know. Yeah. And it obviously affected my reading, my life. Sometimes I did good reading it. Sometimes I just couldn't bring myself to read at all during certain days. I never hit a complete reading slump, but I did kind of slow down sometimes. Like some months I only read like four or five books, which is bad, but it's just not, you know, what I wanted. You know, I dealt with it, but, um, but I think it's kind of hard to even when I'm looking at the, um, books that I, that I liked, um, I have a weird association 
to it and I call it in my my own expression the golden girls effect because I realized early on um during you know when things went into lockdown that I hadn't really read I mean watched properly the golden girls tv show and it happened to be on a channel that I think was new to my cable package I have a very basic cable because come on and so I decided I'm gonna watch it and it usually came on in the morning so it was kind of my way of getting started during the day and I liked the show a lot um yeah, it was, it was fun to watch, actually. And then I was ordering groceries in a lot because I didn't want to go out that much. And uh, the slots were very unavailable. You know, to, if you just want something to come in the afternoon or evening, it, it was a gamble if you were going to get that. So often I would end up having to have things delivered first thing in the morning. I was just grateful to have that. But I remember doing a lot of my, you know, disinfecting, all that wiping down and stuff. First thing in the morning when the Golden Girls were on. So, and it was kind of like still... It felt dark in the apartment. I don't know how to explain that. <clears throat> but even like the music of not the not the theme song, but the music in the TV show, like I associate all of that with that early, really confused time. I mean, it's still it's still kind of a crazy time now. It's you know it's not like it's gotten better yet. But in New York, it was just at that time it had hit New York so badly that I felt like it was just like this horrible citywide despair. And a lot of just people talking about, you know, oh, I'm so glad I got out of New York. And it was actually really disheartening for me. Um, so that whole mood just now I can't bring myself. Of course, I watched a lot of it, but now I can't bring myself to watch any Golden Girls. Like even if I know it's on, I can't watch it. And I know I like the show. So I kind of I know that's a weird thought, but it reminds me of some of my reading. Some of the books I read earlier in the year during that time period, like um, The Mirror and the Light was probably is probably one of my favorite books this year by Hilary Mantel and um the other Bennett sister by I didn't write down but anyway the other Bennett sister you know it was it was really um a great book so I mean that was just off the top of my head two things that I really enjoyed but I associate so much with that time that I can't really I can't really make a favorites list yet without feeling that weird pull of angst <laughs> so um you know, however, I will eventually be able to look back at certain books and talk about them more cheerfully. For instance, one of the worst years of my life when my father died and other people died and my cats died, just a, one thing after another, even around the time period when my father died, I was reading a book that, um, uh, it's the Jasper Ford's The Fourth Bear, by the way. It's, um, hilarious. And to this day, I think it is one of my favorite books of his and just at all and I don't really associate it now too much with you know my father dying um and and all the other things that happened that year but I also um yeah so but I remember that it happened then so I've been able to distance myself it's been a while from the really negative associations with with that particular book but I haven't you know I'm still not that far away from everything obviously of 2020 to be able to do that yet. I don't know, but that could change in another week. You never know. But right now I just, I was looking at things. I was looking at all the books I read and I was like, Oh, I'm going to make a list. And I was just like, Ugh, no, I can't. No, not yet. Moving on, moving on. So, so moving on 2021, I'll talk a little bit about, um, I already did talk about some books I wanted to read and I didn't get into all the things I was gonna I was gonna get a stack of nature writing that I wanted to read and more history books and more classics etc but then I said you know I did it I did I did good I have plenty of things to read and I'm gonna keep going with the classics um challenge and I'm very happy about that um I have a lot of stuff like again um I'm not gonna worry too much about how many books I read I already mentioned that but yeah if I don't make certain goals, I'm just not going to worry about it. Um, doesn't mean I'm not going to try. It just means I'm not going to worry too much about it. Because, you know, there's too many other things to worry about it. And I thought, you know, people like to choose words, you know, of, of the year. You know, people who have um, <laughs> journals and stuff. Motivating words. And there's a lot of things. Like, I always want to say things like gratitude. You want to have cheerful attitudes. You know, calm, of course, is an important word. But I'm not big on choosing words. However, I thought... For now, my theme word is going to be one of my generation. And I'm that generation that people keep forgetting about, Gen X. 
um, everybody keeps talking about like boomers versus millennials versus Z or whatever. <clears throat> and I'm like, first of all, every generation had, has problems and none are better than the others or worse than the others really, I don't think. But, um, so I don't like that whole comparison thing, but I find in all these studies, the Gen Xers are forgotten the most. I don't know why. And even, even if you look, I'm not into politics that much, but even if you looked at all the presidents that have been around, there has not been a Gen X yet. Although we've been of age for a number of years now. And, um, and I don't think there will be, honestly. I think if it, you know, leaves the, 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 the boober generation, it will probably go straight to, um, millennials. And that's, fine I'm just saying <laughs> but you know the one thing about my generation I'm not saying no one ever felt like this from any other time period I'm just saying um there was a little bit of hope that came I think early on in my generation you know especially the older ones that that maybe grew up in the 80s and remembered a lot about the 80s and that kind of exuberance you know the big hair and the <laughs> big shoulder pads and all that kind of loud and you know money oriented kind of <laughs> whatever exactly that word just came out I couldn't even keep it in uh, um, and then things just started going downhill I mean they already saw disillusionment from the older generations probably and they saw things not doing as well as they hoped certain financial downturns happened at the end of the 80s etc and then you saw a lot of the people of my generation go for the grunge era you know the it was still a fashion trend, basically, but it was that look that, oh, I don't really care. And you might care, but you don't want to look like you care. You may be a hard worker, but you don't want to look like you're trying so hard. You know, all these things. You could be successful, but you don't want to push the envelope. You don't want to, you don't want to show that you're... So you kept hearing that word, whatever. People would say things like, whatever. <laughs> and, um, and it doesn't mean that they didn't care, but they didn't want to show that they cared. You know what I mean? And uh, I remember, I'm, not, I'm probably going to misquote it, but I always think of that Queen song that says, you know, whatever happens, I'll leave it all to chance. Um, you know, the heartache, the failed romance, you know, etc. Which sounds really um, depressing. And it was kind of a sad song, but the, sh the show must go on was the title. So it wasn't like they, you know, it was just taking taking things as they go, but still moving forward. And I think that's kind of how I feel in a sense. Not that I want to just let things happen, but I don't want to get too excited. You know, okay, 2021, I hope these things happen. I'd like to do this and I'd like to do that. Um, um, you know, um, but, but just going from what I've seen, I don't want to get too excited. For instance, um, last year I wanted to get some write, more writing done. I haven't done too much of that. And I have the circumstances. I had more time. I have a room of my own <laughs> to do so. But um, I don't know. I just, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe one day I will. But um, so my main goal is just to keep going and to enjoy myself as I keep going. Doesn't mean I can't make any goals, but just not to be too, too, too overexcited about them or too, or even too underexcited. Just, yeah, whatever. It works out that's great i wouldn't mind like i see so many of these reading challenges and whatever you call them I keep saying whatever now it's gonna now it's just gonna keep coming out uh, i probably say it a lot anyway and don't realize it but um i thought it'd be kind of fun to be a host of something or a co-host but i don't know if i can i don't know if I, I can actually do that i definitely can't be a solo because you know i don't think i have that pull yet to to motivate but i also um I'm not sure if I could coordinate with somebody. So if that happens, that would be nice. But I'm not really, I'm not really trying too hard toward that either. So whatever. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's my just brief, yet another, another, um, you know, looking, looking at next year and, and a little bit back, but not too much. So we have a few more minutes and I thought I'd just finish off this whole ramble with another haul. Cause you know, that would be a nice goal to stop hauling so much, but I can't seem to do that. Um, but I did have one more visit to book off and I thought I'd show you what I got. And uh, maybe next year I will just chill a little bit. But for now, here's what I got. Um, this is a book I had never heard of before that I know of, unless it was mentioned briefly on BookTube. And I don't want to be a hipster and be like, well, I've heard of this, whatever. But I did see a few reviews on Goodreads, but not a lot. So I think 
this must not be a very well-known book because it's an American book that I've never heard of. It's a Penguin classic and this is Miss Ravenel's or Ravenel's? Ravenel? I don't know. Conversion from Secession to Loyalty by John W. DeForest. And oh, do you remember Star Trek DeForest Kelly? Do you remember him? Anyway, <laughs> I'm a doctor, not an author. Anyway, um, and I don't know much about it. It, uh, it just says it's a war novel. Um, let's see. It is, and it doesn't really say much about it. It, it, but it's supposed to be about around like the Civil War time period. Um, and that's all I know. So I don't know much about the Civil War, and I know nothing about uh, John William DeForest, except that he seems to have lived, what is this, 1926 to... 1906 it seems so not the worst time period anyway um so i thought that if i'm ever trying to read something from that time period this might be a good idea i don't know just a different perspective that i've ever heard i don't know that into more war mob war novels but i might like that okay so you're gonna see a little more about my um trying to get a little bit more into russian literature and Russian history without going all the way, just a little bit at a time, I think. But I found this for a dollar and I thought that's that wasn't bad. And I like, I don't know why, but I kind of like these Norton critical editions because um, it's not a very long novel, but they have little writing. So if you want to read about the book, essays and literary criticisms or whatever, you, you also have that ability to do so. So it's kind of fun when you're in the kind of studious mode, which I can be occasionally. Um, not very often, but I think my sister read this one and liked it. So, um, this is Fathers and Sons by Ivan Turgenev. Turgenev? Turgenev? Uh, um, <laughs> so I don't know how the translation is. This one is by a Ralph Matlaw. No idea, but it's not a big book, so if I really do feel like, after Crime and Punishment, if I feel like getting more into Russian literature, but I don't feel like maybe quite being ready for maybe War and Peace yet, I'll have a shorter book to read. I think that's a nice thing to have around. Okay, and um, if you've seen my previous videos, you know I'm trying to collect the British Library crime classics. I don't need to have every single one of them, but I like to have the collection. I think they're beautiful, and I just like that they cover so many different um, writers. Although this writer really sounds familiar, um, and I probably... Uh, okay, so this is Murder of a Lady, a Scottish mystery by Anthony Wynne. And first of all, I... I always like reading Scottish stuff, so that could be nice and sounds sad, Murder of a Lady, but um, I think this could be cool. The Anthony Wynne says is a pseudonym of Robert McNair Wilson, who wrote 27 detective novels, so I bet I have some of his stuff, featuring Eustace Haley, a physician and amateur smooth. 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 He's a smooth. Wait, is that... Could be... Hmm. Now I'm wondering if he is the one who wrote... I am going to take your time for a moment. Give me a moment. Okay, I did find out, but I'll, I'll find out later. Um, so Eustace Haley, a physician and amateur sleuth. I said it. He also published on economics and history, notably a biography of Napoleon. So he is probably someone I should learn a little more about. We'll see. Uh, but I just, I just love these books. And um, this book has a slight dent in the front, which kind of annoys me, but... Again, for a dollar, I am going to put up with it and see if I like the book at all. I've heard of this before, so Diary of a Provincial Lady by E.M. Delafield. Written, I think, in the 30s. Published in 1930, so, yeah. And it says it's reminiscent of Austin Barberpin and Angela Thurkel, Thurkel, who wrote, like, you know, Trollope, Trollope World books. Um, her, his Barset books. Um, Farsature, whatever you call them. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm working on finishing that series this, this, um, year. And she kind of continued from there in that world of people. So that's kind of cool, I think. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to yell. Ah, that's cool. Um, <laughs> but if it's that kind of style, then I should enjoy it. I do like that kind of thing. I mean, that's, that's a nice group of grouping of writers, right? So speaking of Jane Austen, this book, um, I don't know if it's any good, but 
published by Palgrave Macmillan, which sounds very nice. This is Global Jane Austen. Pleasure, passion, and possessiveness in the Jane Austen community. So I don't know if I'll be able to wait to read this um, during Jane Austen July, because I've been just dying to read something else Jane Austen-y about her or of her, you know? Uh, so that's like six months. I don't know if I can wait till six months, but we'll see. If not, then I will have this as an option to read during that month, right? Uh, yeah, it's kind of pretty. I like the naked hardcover. Always love that. All right. Now I mentioned how I want to read <clears throat> more about um, the Russian history times. And I this book, I think it's this book that got recommended to me. I think. I have read more. I have read by, um, I have read Catherine the Great by Robert K. Massey. And I am, I really enjoyed it. So this is another one, Nicholas and Alexandra. So the classic account of the fall of the Romanov dynasty. I have books, hello, <laughs> by, you know, about, about that time period and more. I have a few about, one or two about the, the daughters and stuff. And uh, I know it's not necessarily cheerful, but it does fascinate me a little bit. So I wouldn't mind having more to read about that. Last but not least, it's just kind of a different uh, subject, but I like travel writing. I've always liked travel writing. So <clears throat> this is, and I like this, it's a pretty cover. This is Meetings with Remarkable Muslims, uh, a collection of travel writing. And um, yeah, just different kinds of folks on the front um, and in the back. <laughs> I was, what was it that I noticed? Um, oh yeah, one of these writers, I noticed it said... Um, Sarah Anderson, one of the people. After traveling and working in other people's bookshops, Sarah Anderson founded her own shop in 1979. She stayed with the travel bookshop in Notting Hill for 25 years before leaving and now travels, writes, and teaches. So the travel bookshop, isn't that the one, isn't that the bookshop that is, that the one in Notting Hill is based on, I think? The movie Notting Hill with Hugh Grant, Julie Roberts, you know? It's like one of those movies about bookshops not just about bookshops but that has bookshops in it i love that um so that's kind of interesting right i mean it's only one one contributing writer in here but <laughs> i just thought this could be a nice like it is kind of it's travel writing but it's also kind of a collection of essays which i also wanted to get more into at this point did i see the word t yes i did yes i did i see it. i saw the word t but it has something to do with um some kind of drug so not the same anyway I think I've talked your heads off enough and um so that's my little looking back looking forward and more books to look forward to reading so if I haven't seen your I'm looking for everybody's videos of you know their plans for this year and everything and um you know looking forward to seeing what all of your progress is going to be um if you don't have videos please let me know in your comments any kind of plans you have that um any of these books look interesting to you, etc. How do you feel about 2020? Do you have the same kind of weird feeling that I do that it's not that I don't want to talk about it, but I'm not ready really to get into it too much. I don't know. Just, I usually like doing retrospectives. I just, ah, ah. Well, that's all for now. This is a nice tea, by the way. It does have a nice smooth kind of flavor. Usually I don't like it when it has a little bit of caramel in it, but it seems to be just the right amount. So it's slightly desserty. This is Catherine. Taking tea with Catherine. Have a lovely tea and book fill day. See you next year.